When I made my video on the Trump-Biden debate about a month ago and gave my opinion that I believed Biden should step down, I didn't think it would actually happen. That's not to say that I caused it or something, certainly not. But rather, it just seemed to be the case that at 81 years old, Biden was no longer sharp enough to be president. Trump's been slowing down too, he's still 78, but Biden's decline is on a whole other level. Nonetheless, I expected the Democrats to stick with Biden due to the incumbent advantage, though I failed to realize the obvious point that both Biden and Trump are incumbents, which kind of mitigates that bump. I also pointed out in my video specifically on Biden's age that polling data from shortly after the debate showed Trump and Biden tied, Kamala trailing Trump by 1%, and every other possible contender doing worse. Only Michelle Obama actually decisively beat Trump, and she has no interest in the job. So, even though I thought Biden was unfit for office, I expected the Democrats to run with him. He won the primary, after all. Which is why I was actually quite surprised when he dropped out. On July 21st, 2024, the official President Biden Twitter account posted a letter declaring his intentions. He also said he'd address the nation from the Oval Office in the coming days to expand on his decision. And three days later, on July 24th, 2024, he did just that. My fellow Americans, I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. Whoa, uh, was that someone's cell phone alarm? I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute desk in the Oval Office. The video is pretty much what you'd expect. Biden touts the accomplishments of his administration. He endorses Kamala Harris as the Democratic nominee for the upcoming election, at least indirectly. But he also overtly states that democracy is at stake. And yeah, everyone fucking says shit like that for every single election. This is the most important election of your lifetime, etc, etc. I think this rhetoric has been overused. The Democrats have drawn from this well too many times over the past few decades. But nonetheless, if you believe that Trump attempted to steal a 2020 election, that does actually make him a threat to democracy. Biden and the Democrats certainly believe it. He says so right in the video. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing, can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. It's Biden's view that preserving the democratic institutions of the American Republic must come before the personal ambitions of any one person, including himself. So he's decided to step aside and allow somebody whose brain isn't drooping out of their ears to run against Trump. A lot of people on the right have been screaming that Biden is unfit for office, even back before he was elected in 2020. In retrospect, going back to Biden's 2020 debate performances, he appeared downright chipper in comparison to that disastrous 2024 debate. There's a rumor going around, which sounds like it could be true, that the main reason the Biden campaign agreed to such an early presidential debate, like three months earlier than normal, was to test Biden out in an uncontrolled environment. Pulling the ripcord on his candidacy is a lot easier in July than it is in September. And the Democrats' worst fears came true. Biden just was not able to stand up to scrutiny, and over the course of the next few weeks, both his internal party support and his external support among voters and prominent public figures began to evaporate. Biden had to present himself as gaffe-free at his next few public events, which he also failed to do. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President. And then the assassination attempt against Trump changed the whole race. The GOP united around Trump. Both the party machinery and the rank-and-file Republican voter galvanized for his cause in the wake of the attempt on his life. At the same time, Biden tested positive for COVID and went into isolation, having a hard time getting into the presidential limo that was meant to take him to that isolation. The optics difference between the two candidates was never more stark. Calls for Biden to step down from within the party grew, as Democrats began to fear that they might not only lose the White House, but Congress and the Senate as well. It was pretty clear, though, that Biden just didn't want to do it, at least initially. However, as pressure continued to mount, as donors continued to pull out, as the whole situation snowballed into an uncontrollable disaster, Biden finally relented. Eight hours before the Biden Twitter account announced that he was dropping out of the race, the New York Times published an article where it was claimed that anonymous sources within the White House have confirmed that Biden had begun to ask if Kamala could beat Trump. At that time, the polling put her at about the same chances as Biden. Three hours before the announcement, Fox News pounced on the New York Times story, and in reply received this comment from the White House. That claim is false, and the New York Times did not ask us about it. He is more committed than ever, and he looks forward to campaigning this week. You know, it's always kind of funny to come across moments like this, where somebody definitively states they're not going to do a thing right up until they do it. I know a shit ton of people have retrospectively laughed at this Washington Examiner article from back in May, which claimed that Biden dropping out was a conspiracy theory. Nice one, dude. Let's go back to that rumor about Biden's ousting for a bit. 
That came from a July 22nd New York Post article, where anonymous sources in the Democratic Party reported that prominent party figures pushed for an early debate in order to make it clear to both the rest of the party and the voters that Biden wasn't up to snuff. According to this insider, Biden reacted with anger and insisted he would continue until the higher-ups threatened him with the 25th Amendment, the process by which a sitting president is declared unfit for office and forcibly removed. This is all anonymously sourced, so this article could be complete bullshit. For example, the source also claimed that party support would not coalesce around Kamala Harris, but instead Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, and Obama's initial lack of support for Kamala was used as proof of this. However, so far, any support for Kelly has failed to materialize, and Obama has since come out in support of Kamala's campaign. Another article from PBS tells a different story. After speaking to a bunch of Democratic congressmen and senators, Chuck Schumer visited Biden during his COVID isolation. That's a whoopsie. I guess COVID really is a thing of the past. And told him that he needs to think about Trump in the White House with the Republican Supreme Court and possibly the House and Senate. There was just too much at stake. Biden reportedly told him that he needs a week to think about it. And then the two men hugged. Hope you're wearing a mask, buddy. I'm not surprised that this is how this whole thing played out, frankly. Of course, in the early days after that disastrous debate, the Democrats were always going to publicly unite around their man at a loyalty, while at the same time having private conversations about the next steps. Why would it be any other way? Like, imagine if they came out and publicly said, yeah, Biden doesn't know what he wants to do yet. We'll just keep you in limbo for the next few weeks so we figure it out. That would be an even greater disaster. So, Biden's out of the picture. What does that mean for the Democrats? Well, the Democratic convention is scheduled to be held on August 19th. Kamala Harris is the presumptive nominee, but it's not set in stone yet. Here's how the process works. In a presidential primary, party members don't actually vote for the candidate they want to represent their party in the presidential race. Instead, they vote for delegates. A delegate is a person who will attend the convention and then vote for the candidate in capacity as representative of the people. For example, California has 415 pledged delegates. What this means is, during the primary, Democrat party members in various locations in California vote for a candidate. The delegate who represents those people is required by party convention to cast their vote for that candidate at the convention. That is, unless the candidate drops out or dies. Then you have what is known as an open convention, where delegates are free to cast their vote for a candidate who, in their estimation, would best represent the will of their constituents. Since Kamala Harris was endorsed by Biden, she was his running mate, she's his VP, it's the Biden-Harris ticket that people voted for, it's a safe bet that the majority of the delegates believe that the people who voted for them want them to cast their vote for Kamala at the convention. Current unofficial counts show that of Biden's 3,905 delegates, 3,359 of them intend to cast their vote for Kamala Harris. 561 of them have so far refused to make the jump over. So, therefore, Kamala is the presumptive nominee for the Democrats in 2024. And ever since she's taken the spotlight, donor funding has skyrocketed and recent polling shows her to be closing the gap with Trump. One survey from today showed that although 48% of voters support Trump and 47% support Kamala, Kamala has a 10-point lead with voters under 45. This isn't that mystical youth vote that always swings left wing, but never materializes. This also includes people in their 30s and 40s. Republicans were hoping to target this segment of the population with J.D. Vance as their vice president pick, and so far, their expected support has failed to materialize. All in all, despite the incredible drama of this year's race and the uphill climb facing Kamala, she seems to be doing okay, at least so far. I think Trump might be at his peak. He's hot off the heels of the assassination attempt, and so his support will never be higher than it is right now. But Kamala's campaigning hasn't even started yet. She might still have room for growth. That's just my armchair analyzing, though. What do I know? The retarded part of this whole story, though, is the conspiracy theories that are kicking up about how everything played out. Some people looked at the Twitter letter, which was not written on White House stock, with an apparently photocopied signature, and began to make the claim that Biden did not actually approve of this course of action, that he was being unilaterally forced out against his will by his party. Others were analyzing his appearance and his speech patterns in his dropout video, claiming that he's heavily medicated, or that copious amounts of makeup are covering up injuries that Biden has apparently sustained. This, combined with Charlie Kirk claiming that Biden did not in fact have COVID, but rather an anonymous source, has claimed he suffered some serious medical mishap while in Las Vegas and had to be evacuated, and that apparently Biden hasn't been seen since. He might even be dead! All of this has led to rampant speculation about Biden's current well-being. People have begun to say that the video on the 24th was not only Biden covering up an injury, but that it was in fact pre-recorded. Those same people also took note of this public call that Kamala Harris had with Biden on the 22nd. It is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the, on the call, and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do, everybody here does. It's neutral. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Oh. They're saying that's not Biden's voice. Others are saying that the call is pre-recorded because Kamala stumbles over her words and says something like, wreck. Joe, I know you're still on the, on the call. 
Listen, I can believe that Biden was ousted from power by party bigwigs. I can even believe the possibility that he's secretly hospitalized or dead, and that everything since the COVID isolation has been elaborate political theater. However, I need evidence of that. You guys have to present something more than schizo posts, you know? There's gotta be something more concrete that Biden's been forced out than just whatever this is. Oh, you're just gonna run with it? Okay. Yeah, the current Republican narrative has switched from Biden is a vegetable, he needs to step down, it's too dangerous, we gotta force him out, to, oh my god, Biden was forced out, this is a coup against democracy. The conspiracy theory of Biden being dead was quickly forgotten about after footage of a Fox News reporter shouted at him some questions about dropping out, which he refused to answer. Why did you drop out of the election? Was it a difficult decision to make? Yeah, he's his usual bumbling Biden self here, but he doesn't appear to be dead, at least not yet. No, the Republicans have coalesced around the coup narrative. I went through the procedure for when a candidate drops out earlier in the video, and this sort of thing has happened before for other elected positions, like governor for example, and also in other democratic countries, where a candidate dies or drops out before election day. It's also happened before to an American presidential candidate as well. In the election of 1872, Horace Greeley ran against Ulysses S. Grant. Greeley died after the vote, but before the electoral college met to confirm the next president. Greeley had lost the election, winning only 63 electors to Grant's 286. But those 63 electors were free to cast their votes as they saw fit. 42 voted for Indiana's governor, Thomas Hendricks. 18 voted for Greeley's VP pick, Benjamin Brown. Two voted for the former governor of Georgia, Charles Jenkins. And one voted for Supreme Court Justice David Davis. The reason that most electoral systems are set up, such that people vote for intermediaries and intermediaries vote for candidates, is specifically to provide a legitimate course of action should the winning candidate die or drop out in the 11th hour. It is next to impossible to quickly set up and run another full election. It's comparatively quite doable for the electors or the delegates or whoever, who have already been voted for and who are far fewer in number, to be asked to cast their vote again in the interests of those who have already voted for them. Personally, I would have preferred that Biden drop out before the primaries, and then allow an open primary process to unfold so that his successor could be more directly voted on. We all saw what was happening after that FBI report that commented on his mental acuity. But just because that didn't happen, doesn't mean that the delegates casting their votes at an open convention is somehow a coup of Biden. People who are coping about the Republicans filing lawsuits to keep any Biden replacement off the ballot are retarded. The court settled this issue already, in Democrats versus Wisconsin 1981, where it was decided, TLDR, that the party has the final say over who their candidate is, and therefore who appears on the ballot, not the state government. But this current Supreme Court has been going kinda nuts recently, so who knows. By the way, all this doesn't mean that the Democrats aren't also being cringe as well. Just as it was cringe for the Republicans to whiplash themselves from demanding Biden be removed to screaming that Biden was cooed, even though by all current evidence Biden appears to be stepping down willingly, it's also cringe for the Democrats to whiplash themselves from calling anybody who complains about Biden's obvious decline ageist and ableist and delusional to now screaming about Trump's own age and cognitive decline. Saudi Arabia and Russia will be oh. oh my Other god! Notable. Oh my god, this is elder abuse. Yeah, listen, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass about Trump being a spring chicken. He's also on the decline. But frankly, I'm not going to accept this hand-wringing from Democrats who now suddenly care about this topic when they were all willing to put a fucking bucket over their head when it came to their guy. This simply comes off as petty and hypocritical. But you know what? The coup claim from the Republicans is also petty and hypocritical. Probably most noteworthy of all is that the Trump campaign apparently didn't see Biden dropping out coming. Trump has been complaining that all of his efforts fighting Biden will be for naught, and he now has to start over from scratch against Kamala. You know, you think you would have expected this. It's been the Republicans who have consistently said that Biden's unfit this whole time and demanding he step aside. Why is Trump now declaring that he won't debate Kamala? Is it because Kamala, despite her many faults, is not old geriatric Joe? She won't get confused in the middle of the debate and roll over for him? In any case, the trajectory is set. It's a Trump-Harris race now, not a Trump-Biden one. And I think Trump is reacting like this because Kamala might actually have an edge, and Trump's smart enough to see it. The attack ads write themselves. Prosecutor cop Mala Harris versus 34-time convicted felon Donald Trump. The Democrats are not usually the party of law and order, but the mantle is now very easy for them to grab, at least optically, and they would be stupid not to try it, especially considering how popular law and order topics are right now, from crime rates to legal immigration. I've personally got a lot to say about Kamala Harris. Hell, you know what? I've got a lot to say about Biden's four years in office. I've been saving up most of it with the expectation that in the next few months I'd be putting it out. I guess those plans are torpedoed. Ah, fuck it, I'll do it anyway. But at this point, insofar as the race is concerned, it really does seem to be anyone's game. I guess we'll see where this all goes. Alright guys, that about does it for me. Hey, I'm sure you've noticed that there's been a bunch of videos going missing on my channel over the years. Usually it's stuff that YouTube gives me a slap for. That stuff is up on alt tech, but one fan decided to start a side channel where he's actually uploading all of my lost content. I'm not involved in it, but if you want to see stuff that's gone missing over the years, click on the link on screen or in the description. And I hope you enjoy. Have a good one guys. I love you.